tired of hacking up the Sonoff basics to put in the wall? Let's check out the KU LED Wi Fi switch. You might be asking, why is it the best? It's easy firmware flash and there no soldering at all. They include all the face plays for you. If you got others, it'll work with those two gang or more. Big plus, no clips holding it in, screws, so there's no popping out of the wall. All in one solution, not having to hack in other buttons or anything else like that. You just plug it in and screw it in the wall. This is the two pack of the KU LED Wi Fi switches. They're not dimmers, they're just going to be your standard on off switches. Looks like they're $39.99 on Amazon Prime in the US. But they work with the To Your Smart Life app. So if you just want to go that route and just install them in the app and not have to do anything special to the switches, don't even open them up, just install them. Go into Home Assistant, they do have the Smart Life To Your component. Configure that. It'll bring them right into Home Assistant. And you can just use your little cloud, the cloud actions with Home Assistant, not to do anything different with them. But if you want to get a little more, which we're going to get into in a minute, you can. Standard. Here it shows you the dimensions. They do show ETL listed. You can take a look and see what's on, on the Amazon link. We're going to put that link in the description. You'll also need your standard FTDI USB flasher. A few jumper wires. Standard jumper wires. And four male headers to stick in the end of the jumper wires to keep them together. So we got a two pack of switches and little neat little bags. They're just one of your regular decor looking switches. They're white, which most stuff is. Actually squared off the core, single push, LED, your standard ground. Let me open this one. Your standard ground, neutral, your hot in, and your line out. It's a plastic case. And the one great thing is there's screws. There's no they're not no having to pop it open or pry it open. Let's read the two switches. Get your screws to go in your box. Get the screws. Four wire nuts for each switch. And then two single Decora plates. They're also white. And you'll notice there's they're screwless. They just snap onto the switch. And they actually look pretty good. Just to compare, it's just a standard white faceplate. Let's move some of this out the way. Pretty much about the same white. And this is a little off white faceplate here. So don't look at the color, but standard decor faceplate fits fine holes you can see the holes line up top and bottom it's all squared off no issue so these will fit fine in whatever your standard US decor face plates whether you're having a two three gang four gang whatever you got going on and it'll fit in there so no having to modify face plates or anything like that once you undo the screws you don't have to pull the sticker off it's going to pop right open. Really, really simple. Standard little plate. You push it to the side. And you'll notice right away there's going to be a header. There's four pins and they are not filled with solder. So, what does that mean? We're just going to take a little simple header pin like this. And we'll put four wires on it from our USB and this makes it really really simple since this is ESP8266 based it's much like the older versions of the Sonoff it's almost like they thought about someone opening you know opening this and putting Tasmodo on it 
you don't want to get them mixed up you don't want to do reverse polarity and you don't let that magic smoke out of that switch for these I just put the regular jumper DuPont jumper wires just like this so first we need to head on over and download the latest version of Tasmodo we'll go to the github page for the Tasmodo firmware come over here and go to releases scroll down till you see the sonoff.bin file we'll download sonoff.bin we'll go on to the github of let's control it ESP easy but if you go to releases and we use the same method that many of y'all familiar with that the good doc suggest download the latest ESP mega zip because it has the flash easy file as he calls it so at our downloads see I got the ESP mega we'll go ahead and we'll unzip it and we'll tell you there's our Sonoff bin file looks right 472k we'll go ahead and cut it bring it on into the folder and paste it I'll put it in the four holes and what I do is hold a little bit of downward pressure with my index finger and that way allows me to push the button which it happens to be in this case GPIO 0 because you have to hold GPIO 0 at boot once you first power it up so I'm going to hold that little downward pressure hold my thumb and plug this device in give it a couple seconds just to make sure let go of your thumb but keep your index finger held down flash easy it automatically picks the COM port mine happens to be COM27 yours will be different firmware will pick Sonoff bin and fingers crossed we'll hit flash should pull up another window you'll see it if you get this you know you got it if you didn't you probably have your TX and RX lines reversed and just simply take those and, and swap them back unplug the unit hold down GPIO 0 go through the process again plug it back in and make sure you still hold that pressure once you see the flash complete message you know things are good Thermite, which is by CompuPhase we'll have the links to all these software in the description and on the github page go to settings make sure that you're on COM27 still I like to hit disconnect connect and come down here at the bottom let's hit the enter key and sure enough we can see we already got Tasmodo trying to waiting for us to do our commands at this point you can do your backlog commands for your password your SSID I'm gonna enter my stuff off camera I just put in the SSID and the password for my Wi-Fi and you'll be able to tell if you leave termite plugged in once it resets and if you do get it where it's hung up it may be because it's still in that flash mode you may want to cycle the power on it once you put that ID and that pass that SSID and password and it should come back up and back in termite and should see something similar to this we know we're gonna go to it's already set as the Sonoff let's see if we can zero button does sure enough toggles it as on we can toggle it goes off comes back on you toggle it here toggle it off now you won't hear the relay clicking because typically in a lot of these switches the relay is requires to be powered with 5 volts and we're only sending 3.3 volts through the flashing device so let's go ahead and unhook the flashing device and we'll put the cover back on figure out the if we need to change this to a generic module possibly and uh, for the if the relay is on a different GPIO pin so we got the switch hooked up to mains power we have it on off and you can see there's no LED on and as we've done before we can push the button and you do hear it click which is great because we don't have to go in and go figure out any of the GPIO pins and make a new template like this is just 
the best that they've gone through whoever thought whoever designed this switch they must have thought of someone wanting to do this because it's very easy to open those four little Phillips screws they don't have to pry anything open or break anything once you go through and you had the little simple little headers flash it and go so in home assistant we'll open up configuration whether it be configuration uh, YAML or if you split it off into different lights YAML I'll have all the regular templates in all the description and also the github page go through real quick on this which I see is some people struggling with at different times it's re real simple you're trying to figure out what the different state topics and command topics are is if you go to a Sonoff console and you'll see that you've got the stat slash well and also you'll notice it is using power not power one not power two that's going to be for typically your other devices that have multiple relays it just has one relay so we'll go to and we'll paste this KU lead into here and paste and we'll paste it here as well for the last will and testament topic and what that is is if for some reason you don't have power to that switch whether you cut off a breaker or just some reason is not on the Wi-Fi uh, you had an issue it actually will show unavailable that way you know that switch is not there that's a very powerful feature to use within QTT is the last will and testament so we're gonna leave all these the same payload on off online offline and very important is the retain false we'll do a configuration do general we'll do a check config we got a green configuration valid good to go go down here and hit restart but you'll notice the KU led test just popped in it's currently on off and we'll turn it on and she works one thing I did notice what we do want to set is power retain one and what that's going to do is that's going to keep it's going to retain in our MQTT broker the whether the light switch is on or off. I think it's a great switch. I'll definitely probably be picking me up a few more. It's really easy to do. Fits great. Nice looking switch. The white decors. Be sure and check out my other videos. Subscribe. We got some more coming. Take care.